drive belt connects the treadle mechanism to the machine itself, turning foot power into sewing power. It's one of the few parts on these machines that wasn't built to last forever, so yours might be in poor condition or be missing entirely. Your typical sewing shop or hardware store probably won't carry them, but they're quite readily available online. This belt is a 3 16 inch wide, 6 foot long leather belt. It doesn't have to be those exact dimensions, but they should be close. The actual working length of mine is a little over 5 feet 5 inches, but there might be some variation between machines and cabinets, so a little longer is better. You'll trim the belt to the exact length you need later, so you don't have to worry about it being too long, you just need to make sure it's not too short. I got my belt off Amazon for less than 10 bucks, but that seller is gone and there wasn't a brand on the box. I just went with the cheapest belt I could find and it has been entirely serviceable. So whatever you can find is probably going to do the job. To install the belt on your machine, you'll need a pair of pliers and something to punch a small hole through the leather of the belt. I highly recommend getting down on the floor with a flashlight and looking at the underside of your sewing machine cabinet before you start installing the belt. There are a few guide bars and pieces that can be tricky to get around, and having a mental picture of where they are helps. Another reason to take a look? You're going to be sticking your fingers into the dark, quiet, undisturbed corners of the cabinet to guide the belt. Make sure you're not about to stick your hand into a spider web or some other creepy crawly's home. One end of the belt will have a staple or a hook, and the other will not. Using the end without the staple, put the belt down through the back hole in the cabinet. There is a guide bar under the hole that you can see if you look down through the hole from the top. The belt needs to go to the right of that bar if you're looking at it from the top. Now you're going to thread the belt along the groove of the balance wheel and under the dress guard. You might need to rotate the balance wheel a little to inch the belt along the groove. Grab the end when it pops out the front of the balance wheel groove and you're on to the last hole to thread it through. Here again is a guide bar below the hole. The belt needs to go to the right side of this bar too. With the belt following the correct path, you need to trim it to the right length. Mine is already cut, but yours will probably be quite a bit longer than it needs to be. The belt should be snug, but not so tight that you can't get the staple to hold the ends together. When the belt is fully installed, it should run in the groove by the hand wheel here. When you measure the belt, make sure it's in that groove. Pull it snug, make a mark on the belt where the end of the staple overlaps the end without the staple, and cut at that mark. Punch a hole a short distance from the cut end so that the staple can connect the ends. Do it with the belt out of the hand wheel groove. This gives you more slack to get the staple into the ends and squeeze it closed. To get the belt into the hand wheel groove after the ends are connected, press the belt towards the groove and turn the hand wheel. The belt will pop right into the groove. Your belt is installed. What if you followed all the instructions and it's not working? Maybe the belt is jamming or sticking in spots, maybe it's jumping the tracks entirely. It can be incredibly infuriating, but luckily most of the time it's an easy fix. The first thing to do is make sure you're on the right side of both guide bars. It's easy to get the belt on the wrong side of one or both of them, and the belt won't drive the machine well if it's not exactly in the path it's supposed to be. If the belt is definitely installed correctly, it might be a tension issue. If the belt is too loose, it will jump out of the track. Mine always seems to come out at the back of the balance wheel and jam between that and the dress guard. A new belt will stretch out over the first few weeks of using it. If you were sewing just fine for the first few days, but now your belt keeps jumping the tracks, it's almost certainly stretched out. You just need to shorten the belt a little, or maybe a lot. The belt won't keep stretching forever, so while you might need to make a few adjustments in the first few weeks of sewing, it will eventually get to its final working length and you won't have to keep trimming the belt. When the belt jumps the tracks, it normally feels like the belt is squeezed and slowly stops. If it's more like your belt just slams to a stop, it might be the cut ends. My belt touches the edges of the holes in the cabinet and also the top of the dress guard. I tried leaving them longer, I tried cutting them shorter, I tried pinching the staple harder into the leather, and I tried leaving it looser. Nothing helped. The belt was curled from being in the box and the ends stuck out no matter what I tried. 
I finally got a strip of masking tape and wrapped the connection in tape so that the ends couldn't stick out at all. It's not pretty, but it works. You'll notice in nearly all the footage of me using the machine, the belt has a section of tape on it. That's why it's there. It's keeping the cut ends from jamming on the dress guard and making me want to throw the whole thing out the window.